guys, internal electric fields, you pass the current in the opposite direction of your internal electric field, they cancel each other out. So it acts as a rectifier. And like I said, you get about a 1 to 120 ratio. Okay, that's what these patient ratios we're talking about. Um, and then what we started to do is say, okay, well, what happens if you have two different types of data? Let's say it's a positive and negative data. And we actually started creating data particle based data. Where the electron couple can transfer through this universal field is coupled in both layers. Because now they're behaving differently based on your polarization. And what we can do is create depletion regions at the center of this nanoparticle film, or can uh, uh, send all your current ions into the nanoparticle film, and it either blocks or allows current ions in nanoparticle diodes. What we're working on right now is taking these nanoparticle diodes and wiring them together into a transistor, while at the same time we're trying to make a transistor based component of this nanoparticle. And our goal right now is actually to make a nanoparticle, solely nanoparticle based radio. If you have, we know how to make these nanoparticles that are highly conductive in the water. If you have non ionic lipids on the surface, so they're just long alpha chains without a charge group on the end, they act as resistors. We can now get these things to act as diodes. And with two diodes, you can make a transistor. So right now, what we're trying to fabricate is a circuit board made from nanoparticles. The circuitry is all nanoparticles. I see if we can get pick up a radio station. That's our goal. You have Yes, Make sure that they get the Of course. So um, that's actually important if you're displacing an opposite of torsion path. So in the case of CPAP, which is the surfactant of choice for all these ligands, um, it's actually positively charged. So if you're displacing something that has a stronger binding affinity, this has a much stronger binding affinity for the surface, and it's positively charged, you go, don't go through a point of zero charge. Okay? The, the issue is when you have something negatively charged, you have to do this when it's in a protonated form, and then immediately deprotonate as soon as it's had enough time to functionalize onto the surface. Just so you get over 50% on the surface, when you go, to, so it's 50% positively charged and 50% you know, carboxylic acid that's protonated, then you suddenly deprotonate it, right? And now you have this particle that has enough negative charge to remain stable. It's a kinetic problem. And if you're quick enough to beat the kinetics, you will have a problem. What is quick in this discussion? Quick is on the order of 60 seconds. That's the, that's the fun with the, these nanosystems, is you know, you can go look up uh, CJ Murphy's synthesis of nanorods, and what they don't tell you is you need to add um, your seed particle after you reduce the metal ions. You have about 30 to 60 seconds before if you add your seed, it's not going to do anything, or it'll make a nanorod. No one knows why, no one really cares, so they're just happy as works. Right? But th those are the little secrets of these like time and the kinetics of your system that not a lot of people know, and that's kind of what comes with, you know, the four years of experience doing nothing as an undergrad but making it into your chase. They do if you're at higher temperatures, right? So the work that Swatchy did was saying, you know, oh, these can kind of diffuse. They have a very strong chemical binding. I mean, this is on the order of open and bailing bottom. So, yeah, there's an equilibrium, not that much. Now, if you elevate the temperature to around 60 degrees, if you're at 60 degrees Celsius, now you're at a temperature where these things are very cold. And you can play a lot. But you're doing these at room temperature? But we're doing this all at room temperature. Like I said, this is all aqueous based chemistry. You don't need a chemical hood to even do any of this. But does the that discussion I can talk of I have a skirt cup, that's all I have. The localization of charges on the surface of these interesting shapes, does that change at all? Do you notice that they're coming at all? Or are they very much like your when you deal with monolayers, you've seen that it's, it's, I mean, with a monolayer, you don't have a problem in terms of density, right? It changes a little bit based on the crystal facets that you're working with or your particle, but this is really negligible compared to the quantity that you're talking about, okay? 